Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema. Sit down, first and foremost. Yes, that is Gator Logie on my hat. Shout out to yesterdays.com, who I usually go to for kick ass enamel pins. Uh, a few weeks back, they had a little limited run on these hats, and considering I didn't have any Gator Loki anything, um, I, I had to jump all over it, and it's freaking awesome. So shout out to yesterdays. Um, but now, in case you were wondering, uh, it is, it's very dark. It is very early on a Wednesday morning, which means we are here to talk Marvel TV. And Marvel's latest venture into the world of television and its first into the world of animation in the MCU um, has been off to a good start. I really dug episode one. I thought episode two was a massive step forward. Like That showed the absolute peak potential that this show could have. Um, and now we are on week three, episode three, and unfortunately for me, it's a little bit of a step backwards. I almost would have started What If here. You know, I might have done this episode before we had the Captain Carter episode, but another rock-solid entry, just a bit of a step backward as far as story goes. What am I talking about? Why don't you pull up a chair? Take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in spoiler-free. Into Marvel Studios, What If, Episode 3, What If the World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes. And I think that's probably one of the the things this week that, that kind of was a bit of a bummer. Um, was the fact that you pretty much know what this entire episode is going to be. Um, like... As soon as you turn it on, because the, the what if title kind of gives it away. You know, you get these these first two episodes, you know, what if Captain Carter was the first Avenger, um, which, you know, similarly kind of gave you a big hint at what kind of story you would be telling, which was retelling the, the first Avenger story, which makes a ton of sense um, and really worked for Captain Carter. Um, then jump forward to episode two, like I said, you get your, your absolute potential with the idea of T'Challa becoming Star-Lord. Um, now you kind of go back to that first episode realm where it's like the title is kind of giving away what's going on with this episode. And as soon as the episode starts, you're like, okay, we're about to go visit a lot of familiar places. And I dug going back to all those places where we either first met or, you know, had very critical, um, you know, moments with our heroes. And, like I said, the episode for me just doesn't hit quite as hard because you know what's coming. You know, the title kind of gives away the fact that we're going to watch all of the Avengers one by one be taken out in some sort of way, you know. And I guess... You don't initially know what type of way we're going to lose our heroes until you get to that that first sequence. And mild spoilers, but like if you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you should have an idea of where we're going. You know, we start off with with Tony Stark sitting up in a donut, man. You know, from Iron Man Two. Um, we jump over, we get to see uh, you know Bruce Banner. Um, you know, in interestingly enough, like going back to a movie that you don't typically see Marvel lean into, um, which is the Incredible Hulk. But what was interesting here is, like, when we saw that story, it was Ed Norton. And they do not bring back Ed Norton. Spoilers. <laughs> I don't think anybody should be surprised by that. Uh, but it was interesting to see Ruffalo pop up in a, a portion of a story. Um, I guess, like, mild spoilers, you, you get up into that kind of walkway situation with the Hulk. Um, we, we see Thor go after his hammer, and in seeing all of these moments transpire and seeing what happens to each of our Avengers, um, it creates uh, an immediate mystery. Um, and that was the thing that I think I liked the most about this episode, which was finding out what the answer to that mystery. Why was someone picking off the Avengers before the Avengers even got to be the Avengers? And what would be the motives? And what would drive a person to go to those places? Um, that was, I think, the most interesting beat for me. Like, the, the way in which they choose to go after each of our Avengers um, certainly left me with some slack jaw. <laughs> 
and <laughs> expressions because um, they definitely got creative on a few of them. Um, but what the overall arc is and what's like really going on in the story, um, that was the thing in this episode that hit the most for me. Like when that landed, I was like, oh, snap, man. Like that's what we're doing. That's pretty freaking cool and allows us as audience members to kind of go to a place that we haven't seen yet in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but totally speaks to a relationship that is very familiar to comic book fans. Um, Like, when you see one of the stretches in this episode, you're going to go, oh man, that's a really cool through line that we've never really touched on in the MCU before, or at least not in this exact direct way. And that was really cool. The other thing that I really dug here is the way in which Loki gets used. Like, I thoroughly enjoyed how they opted to use Loki inside of this episode. And it's one of those things where it's like, Loki for me has always been one of my favorite characters. But following Loki uh, on Disney+, Plus, like, you just made Tom Hiddleston one of my favorite favorite things that I want all the time in the MCU. So to see him come back here to the animation realm, as well as all of our, uh, well, most of our Avengers. A few of them don't talk, but I mean, we do get Downey back, we get Scarlett Johansson back, we get uh, Sam L. Jackson back, we get a couple other faces that that come out of that that were, were nice welcome surprises. Um, you know, we get uh, Jeremy Renner back here um, and, like, you know, hearing all those voices is wonderful, but getting to see Loki play the way that they ask him to play inside of this episode was really, really cool. And I liked where we ended up with the, like, what, what, like, the, very similar to that first episode for me, where it was like, we got to the end of that episode, I was like, okay, I would like to see what's next for Captain Carter. We get to the end of this episode, and I'm like, I want to see what's next for Nick Fury, and, like, his new Avengers. Um, I, I thought they, they laid some very interesting seeds that they could certainly go back to again at, at some point in the season. Specifically, I think when you start to see some of these characters start to cross over and come together, you know, I think that's going to happen as we build into the story that will tie into the MCU. Um, but here, like where we left off, I'm like, I want to go back because that's the story I'm more interested in. Um, you know, it's like you showed me something where it's like you, you kept me off guard. You, you certainly left me with a few surprises, but much like the title says, you kind of know where you're going throughout the episode. So by the time we get to the end and you see where we end up, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And where we end up, there's like a little nod to that earlier in the episode where I was like, I dig, I dig, I see what you're doing. I, 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 I thought there was some clever writing into that. So. Look, this show is fantastic. Uh, I specifically love the way in which they get Uatu into the background. I think this was the most landscape shots where you were able to see Uatu in the sky. Um, I love those moments. So, like, the fact that we had, I think, like, three or four of them uh, throughout the episode, like, really hit for me. Because I was like, yes, man, how can we paint Uatu, the Watcher, into the sky in the background? Um, I I really dug that stuff this episode. Um, But... Like I said, man, like this show is something that's hitting for me. I love the idea of this show. Even if the episodes aren't my absolute favorite or the best of the best in the course of a season, this concept is genius and is something that I think would be easy to go back to time and time again. Where it's like you could do this story that overall ties into the MCU like they're, they're, they're planning to do. But you could also keep running these stories off on their own and keep coming up with what ifs. I mean, like when you see the opening and all those glass shards, like there's literally millions of options. Um, so I think that's a cool thing for Marvel to have and a cool thing for them to play with. And I 